Hello ladies, gentlemen and others, my name is Dan, the voice behind the Kaito Dan and welcome to my reaction to episode 4 of Ruby Fairy Tales with the Indecisive King. But before we get started, as always, please make sure you're watching this episode first through RoosterTeeth.com to support the show and the fantastic people behind it. It is time for another Fairy Tales episode and probably, in my opinion at least, one of the most important ones that we're going to see in this short series because as I'm sure you'll hopefully know by watching the episode again first on RoosterTeeth.com uh, there's an item in this story that is more than likely going to play a very pivotal role in the near future for the main series. Um, we'll talk more about that in a sec. But this is also again one of my favorite fairy tales of the collection. There's a lot of them but this is up there for again that perfect balance of being a enjoyable fairy tale in universe I'm sure would be loved by kids and shared a lot by parents but for us and uh, for any characters in universe that wants to dig a little deeper there's a lot of interesting layers that is worth diving into and exploring and discussing so um, yeah as always I'll watch it and then I'll share my fuller thoughts on the story and this version of it uh, afterwards so let's get into it shall we Count it down with me. Three, two, one. Is knowledge the answer to all your problems? I love this like art style here already. Very much like a classic medieval book. But even the wisest. And there's that particular item. What happens to the mortal mind? Jeez. More knowledge than it is capable of bearing. The relic of choice. Let's see what uh. It's like this is the first time we're actually seeing it in action as well. <laughs> that guy looks like an older Jim Hawkins from Treasure Planet. <laughs> I love the pattern now as well on this king's outfit. Very nice. Thank you very much, Your Grace. You are truly as wise as they say. And so the king commands. Oh, that's cool. He's got like. And I like the classic medieval lion pants you would see on Please. these kind of clothes. It's a grim. That's actually pretty cool. Bit more of a unique flair to this kind of medieval style, but working in with uh, being in Ruby. Please, Your Grace, I need your help. Tell me, what has befallen you? Creatures of Grim destroyed my entire village. Now my family is this is a very heartfelt and emotional story just by itself again, just by this stuff here. You must keep living. It's important. If you have nowhere else to go, please show her to one of our many empty rooms. She may stay here as long as she likes. Yeah, in many circumstances you just need to, as Monty would say, keep moving forward. Keep on living. Ooh. Straight flash cut there to uh later on. Ooh, okay. That's an interesting design for this guy. Your grace, your it's making me think of the do uh, God of Darkness. With like the so the curved I horns. I think he had the same one as well. The I wonder if this is actually meant to be the God to of Darkness. <laughs> Very sinister. Sure, I'll trust you, random, mysterious cloak stranger with a crown. Uh, let's see it in action. Oh boy. I love I love the light flashes going around all over the place. It's like fighting on all sides. Oh, well, where'd he go? Where is that man? Find him. Damn, they just went off like a shot. If he was ever there to begin with. <laughs> I wonder, she should have seen him, surely, unless he, like, vanished. See, so, yeah, that's the first time we've actually seen the Relic of Choice in action, so to speak. Your Grace, I have fallen in love, but he is very This is, I think it was the... father disapproves. I, I think it was the father in the, in the original story, so this is the daughter this time, okay. Love is a rare and wonderful gift. If you wish to be happy in this That's an interesting switch up. Follow your heart. And so, the king commands. I can't remember if there was that, like, um, king's assistant there. 
I've read I've read the story again to catch up, but I can't remember. Uh, and then here comes the indecisiveness. I mean, you can understand why he's a bit hesitant, but that's the first sign that there's a an effect from the crown there. Oh, actually, I think I like it better with the daughter because that makes it a bit more an emotional gut punch. She and such an indecisive action caused so much pain already. This is very good. I'm liking this. Is she a faunus? Why has the king closed his gates to his I just noticed she's a faunus. Who are they? That's interesting. I can't, I can't remember if that was in the story as well. Might have added that in. So he has summoned the wisest in the land to solve the problem. You're gonna need a lot more than uh, some of the brightest minds. Let's see how this turns out. You're seeing some of the grain effects, so you can already start to see the, the crown star affect his like well-being as well, not just like his mental state. And the fact that he can't even remember her, and the can't imagine it would have been that long for, to forget. No, I cannot. It is far too great and terrible. Clearly enough to make him feel well shaken. Carry your burden with me. Let me wear the crown so I may understand. Again, I'm I'm loving the emotion in this as well. It's not just like the added context layers. It's like this is a really charming story. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, this is where things get a little bit more heartfelt. Understand me now. This crown, it gives a glimpse into the future. Mm -hmm. Random though, no choice in it. You don't have the choice in the cho in the choice. What this cursed crown has shown me is a distant crossroads. Because he's seen something far, far darker. But it is in the future. And that's why he's so indecisive. He, he's thrown off. He doesn't have an answer, and it's rattling his brain. That is no gift at all. If you only concern yourself with the future. You will miss the good things right in front of your eyes. True that. Oh, I love the harp in the background there. Life is full of Bring him into the light. But you must trust yourself. There we go. I love that effect. That's a nice little visual you touch, that. To keep living. Just a spark on the eyes. This advice is very wise. <laughs> I heard it from a very wise man. Ah, see, this is why it's like really like sweet story for kids. I imagine in universe, and like you can even tell this to kids in our generation. So yeah, that was good. Uh, that was a longer short than usual, um, but I'm glad because it's one of the actual longer stories. Wow, Caden, you had a lot of voices in this. I'm not too familiar with the king and the the widow, but yeah, that was really good. I'm I'm. Glad with how that turned out. There were a few changes in there I noticed from the story. Like again, the 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 daughter this time is asking, not the uh, the father about uh, following true love or following the father's uh, demands. I can't remember again if the book uh, had the uh, the widow as a faunus, but that's a nice touch either way. So yeah, that was the first time we have seen the relic of choice in action. It makes you see a. A vision of the future, a choice that you will have to make. It doesn't tell you what choice, uh, what answer to make. It doesn't tell you much of the uh, ex extended context, I guess. It just tells you a very important choice in your life that you are going to be faced with. And then it's up to you to decide, well, what do I do about it? How do I make the right choice, if there's a right choice? And we see Claire's day that... This was, whatever the king saw, like, there was flashes all over the place, a lot of screaming, and, like, there was obviously a fight going on. So the implication there was, like, he was faced with a choice that could save lives, maybe, but he felt that it was a choice where there was going to be losses no matter what. And 
as a king, sometimes you will be faced with those choices, but I imagine that was maybe the first time he was given such a severe choice on his shoulders. And there's that classic phrase, you know, heavy is the head that wears the crown. There's a lot of tough choices to be made as a king, so I can definitely Im Im understand why such a very dark and very severe choice shook up this guy so much, this king who has been so perfect with his uh, choices and like advice in the past, probably in the more sense that they were very small and more manageable choices that didn't have much losses to be uh, taken regardless. Um, and then in by comparison, the widow got a very important choice of her own. Obviously, marriage is a big choice to make, but there was no consequences there. And that's the interesting thing about this relic. The All the relics we've seen so far have limitations to it. Uh, Jin's lamp had three uh, free questions, and you can't ask of stuff that is not happened yet. The staff of creation, you needed pretty much a blueprint, so you can't just like create, create things willy-nilly, and of course, one creation at a time. So it seems like with the Relic of Choice, the limitation is you don't know like a lot to the choice, you are not able to choose the choice, so you have no idea if you can, you're not able to say, oh, can I uh, wear this and figure out how I'm going to be able, for the heroes I guess, if any of them wear it and try and figure out how do we defeat Salem, you can't get that kind of choice. You can't get a choice of how do we overcome this very tough uh, decision. You are given a choice and it's up to you to decide how to figure it out. And there's going to be a lot of implications about that in the future because of who could wear it. Salem, if she's uh, if she wears it and she does end up with a choice that could affect her plans, how will she react to it? Will she go uh, more confident, feeling that her choice, her fate, her destiny is going to come true to destroy the world, basically, and end uh, her curse? But depending on the choice, she could also have something that completely screws over her plans and she becomes more volatile, more reckless and dangerous because she feels now that she has no plan, so she can just go off the handle. Uh, any of again, any of our heroes, they could be faced with some tough choices that that can affect their mental state. And then there's of course the interesting element that right now we have no clue where this crown is. Um, of course, Ozpin. This is interesting as well because this is his relic. He was in charge of the relic as the headmaster of Beacon and the leading figure of Vale. Um, but he's also the one that has apparently hidden it away where no one will be able to find it. It's not at Veil, vale, apparently. There's a lot of theories about that, like maybe tied to Glinda as well. But a lot of people, uh, th there's, a, there's a lot of opportunities there for wearing the crown, but also just trying to figure out where and how to get it. Um, and I think it's interesting as well, like how this plays into effect with Ozpin himself, because he is a guy who has lived many, many lives now, uh, rattled by choices. His choice to go back to Salem after dying, uh, after being reborn, I should say. Um, the choices to fight and the choice to withdraw. The choice to bring in certain other people to make them as maidens. The choice to give out his power in the first place uh, as the wizard. He is someone who is, like he said in like Volume 1, I have made more mistakes than any man, woman, and child. I'm sure a lot of them have come from his choices. So I'm wondering, has he put it on? Um, I'm sure he probably has just out of interest and knowing the power, but obviously not knowing the full extent to it until he wore it and almost faced a similar situation like this king. In fact, that's a question. I wonder if that king that we saw at the start was a previous life of Ozpin. Like, I'm not sure if it was maybe the warrior king of Vale or just another royal that uh, Ozpin was reincarnated into. But I wonder if he, in like trying to figure out the choices of how to defeat Salem, he was wearing the crown at that time, and it almost got to the point where it killed him, or maybe it did kill him, and then the reincarnation took on its next step. There's so much to talk about in terms of that crown, and like its impact on so many future choices to come, and just the fact that it's the choice crown, Ozpin, Guardian of it, 
he has been driven by choices so much. And, like, he was also, like, discussing in the short, like, there's, like, a very thin line between, like, heroes and, uh, and villains, good versus evil. Sometimes good-intentioned people make bad choices. Look at Ironwood. He is a guy who, no matter what you think about him, he was trying to do what's right for the world, but mix it up with his personal trauma, his stubbornness, his unwillingness to let in other people, that doomed him. The king in this uh, show kind of almost went the same path. He was reclusive of everyone else that needed advice, and he turned away anyone who could have given him some advice because it wasn't giving him the answer that he wanted. And in the end, the advice that was given to him uh, even it, if he wasn't actually wanting it, it did help him in the end. So you just think, man, if Ironwood just was able to let down his guard and actually absorb and take heed that he's not always going to have the right answers, but maybe someone else can. God, how things could have changed. Um, but yeah, this was a, re a really, really good short. Again, it was lo the longest one so far, the longest fairy tale. And I loved how that it turned out. Uh, the visual stuff as well, like the again, I was talking about the lighting, the uh, the visualization of the crown and its powers, the designs of the characters, very good stuff there. Again, I love the the medieval switch ups with like the grim on the clothing, um, all of that was very good stuff. Tops uh, as well to the voice acting, very heartfelt. Uh, so yeah, good stuff overall. Next time though, we're going to be uh, discussing a familiar fairy tale but one with some new layers that maybe some of us aren't ready to experience just yet, but will really take a new perspective on a certain character. But that's next time. Uh, but yeah, for now, let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe and bell buttons and tick the notification box to make sure you get every new video from me as they drop. And follow me on Twitter at that Kaito Dan for more on anything to do with future reactions, updates on the channel, and more. But until next time, have a good day or good night, and peace out.